I'm gonna be shooting on both of these cameras today. I just realized the time changed, so I gotta fix it and make sure that they both match. Because I will tell you, if you are ever shooting on two cameras and the times don't match, and you're trying to edit that stuff and they're in different places, that is just a huge hassle. the handle and cage on the a7s3 because i was shooting some client stuff yesterday i like the wider grip you know for a little bit more hands further away from the sensor bigger movements required to 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 move the the camera i need to make an instagram story for these midday squares that they were kind enough to send me but they sent me this note which is so nice like gave me the whole idea for the story i forgot it in the car i gotta go down and get it I recently found out on TikTok that one of the reasons people with ADHD leave stuff on surfaces, I'm not saying this is the only reason, but is that it's actually helpful for our brains because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. To just leave everything out can maybe keep you on task, but I, I really like things to be clean, so to take it or leave it. Like I would say it's probably more harmful than helpful because if the space is messy, it makes my brain feel more, more, more messy. So clean space is a good space. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna eat these midday bars, not this peanut butter. Midday bars were kind enough to send me these rad. Oh, she's she's she got engaged. Do you ever go to post something on Instagram, but then you just watch TikTok? Thankfully, that um, the vlog helped me to stop, but that could have been an hour right there that I that I could have lost. All right, put this thing on Instagram. Oh. Avery fell asleep. Avery fell asleep on the couch. She doesn't normally do that. She must have been exhausted. And I need to write down everything that I need to do this week. It's currently Tuesday, and I have a lot of videos to get done. I know that this is meta, making a video about making videos, but that's kind of that's kind of what you signed up for. So something that I've wanted to do for a really long time is write down my three year goals, because they always say that you can accomplish a lot less than you think in one year and a lot more than you think in three years. So I've always wanted to write down my three year goals. Just I have a very hard time thinking three years ahead. <laughs> but I feel like it's important because once I write down the three year goals, I wanna like, you know, I wanna break them down step by step ideally into literal day by day like actions. Like goal, three year goal, broken down into, okay, how do we accomplish that three year goal? What steps do I need to take today? Those little micro like 0.5% improvement steps to get to the three year goal. You know what I'm saying? Um, it feels like a really big thing though. It feels like really hard to do. I don't know how to do it. Did you know that you're supposed to give yourself at least three hours after eating to go to bed, to sleep? You wanna give yourself three hours to digest your food. How crazy is that? Josh Yo just launched his uh, Kickstarter for his orbital machine, Marble, Marble Orbit. Um, and the goal was $7,500, which is, I'm sure they just set it as whatever. But uh, it's already got 107000 I just tweeted the other day, I can't wait to see it just blow past a million dollars. I'm positive that it will. 
I will check in with you when it does. I've been listening to Game of Thrones on audiobook and uh, highly recommend it. I love it. I absolutely love it. My manager just sent over a potential thing, new video. This camera in this phone is co-developed with Hasselblad. <laughs> That's so cool. This is the one that MKBHD was talking about. Ah, it's exciting. Quality of photos, bring us new followers, and mention your audience to check out our Instagram account. Whew, I'm hyped on this. Other fun news, Storyblocks and I did a video together like months ago at this point, but it just released today. So they're promoting on their Instagram and Twitter. I retweeted it on Twitter, but I need to download the assets that they made. So they edited it, I shot it. Um, and they put it together like brilliantly. It's about story and stuff. <laughs> um, but it's really good. It's one of the best videos I think that I've ever been a part of in terms of production value, maybe I would say. But I need to download the assets so I can post it on my own Instagram. On my computer, I tried to do it on my phone. Couldn't figure it out. It's from Dropbox. That's what's happening right now. My foot fell asleep. My foot fell asleep. Theory. Pause. Cool. I didn't know you could do that. I just thought like, what if this place was totally clean instead of just talking about it? It's my brain, you know? It's my brain here. A couple of weeks ago, I had the honor of working with Storyblocks to... Oh, <laughs> come on. You know when someone makes a video and like, it just goes so much faster than you think it's going to? That's, uh, that's what Daniel just did right there. That was a great video, Daniel. Great video. Doesn't happen much, but look what just, uh, look what just popped up on the road. Gotta charge that bad boy. Siri, set an alarm to charge the microphone for tonight at 6 p.m. Set your charge the microphone alarm for 6. Okay, it's time to go home. Family. Family time, dinner time. All the time, except for it could slip by slowly and fastly, quickly. So don't let it go. You know what I was thinking about today? What's the word for when you're experiencing nostalgia of the current moment? Is there a word for that? You know in the future that you're gonna look back on this moment and you're gonna feel nostalgic towards it. That's been happening a lot to me with my kiddos. That's what I was thinking about today. <laughs> floating for the past week. Uh, so, we'll see you in an hour. Making a whole video on it. You'll see that. You'll see that video at some point, hopefully. Like I said, I've been doing it for a week. The thing I love about it so far is the idea of the calm and the storm. You know, like taking a whole entire hour, which is like crazy, who has an hour to just do nothing? But taking that nothingness, giving my mind time to kind of like settle and focus, and then applying like crazy effort afterward, just like real good, real good. Today on the docket, business-wise, gotta go pick up some V-mount batteries. I'm renting some V-mount batteries from my buddy Matt Stanball because I need them to demonstrate that they work on this falconized light that I'm doing like a, a long-term review of. 
It sent it to me a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. And uh, video's coming out sometime soon. I just got word from Artlist this morning that they do want to do an integration in March. It's currently March 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, gonna think about that one and plan out these other videos that I'm shooting. That's where we're at. Okay, heading over to get these uh, batteries. V-mount, V-mount batteries for that light. Matt's got a really cool studio up here in North Harrisburg. Big white infinity wall. Shot a couple cool things here. Uh, behind the scenes type stuff, but he's also he also rents out a bunch of gear. And uh, that's why he's got these V-mount batteries, among other things. This from that shoot a, a while ago. Oh no, it never happens. Oh yeah. I set this up. They rescheduled the date. So. Yeah. yeah. I'll put a 12 by 12 diffusion on there, and we'll. I'll rig up a light. I'm not DPing it or anything. They're just they already have all that stuff. Okay. So I'm just, cool. Yeah, they'll get a light and some diffusion and some lights and light stands. It's gonna look awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I hope so. These are charged. Great. You know, boom, boom, two, boom, three hours boom, of charge. Boom. You plug this in if you need a charger. Okay. That's it. Thank you, man. Yeah, I don't have a nice package for it yet. <laughs> so, so I don't need a nice Someday, package. Someday, here. <laughs> oh, look at this, whole yeah. new wall. So. Fantastic. So we're gonna paint that white and kind of whitewash it. Yeah. So we'll have the makeup area. And uh, this table folds out, uh -huh. so it comes out, you know, up to here, and uh, you can sit and get your makeup done. All said and done, and then this will be a changing room. Okay. Now you're just going full bore. Yeah, now that I... Yeah. Love it. After our meeting, you know, it was, it was a game changer. Yeah. So it was good. Good. I love to hear it. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'll get these back. Will you be in the office on Friday at all? I'll be in here, yes, in the morning. We're okay. going to work on building a little car rig. Cool. For a shoot... Uh, on Tuesday. So I'll bring him back on Friday. Yeah, I'll shoot you a text. Sick dude. Or shoot me a text. Thanks whatever, so much. Whatever works. Yeah, and just Thank send you. me an invoice for the fee. Will do. All Thanks, right. Man. Thank you. clock on the dot. So we're gonna see how long that battery can go full blast. And that's that's gonna be for the video. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and wait for it the whole time. I was just thinking. It's 408, this light's still on. It's good. It's good to it's good to know. It's over an hour so far. Just got an email about some vids that I might get to make for another client's channels, like social channels, which I like stuff like that, you know? It's a little bit different than stuff that I make for my own channels, like integrations. Uh, so hooked Trav up with them to talk about pricing and scope of work and all of the stuff. Got an edit done, an hour left. I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do for the next hour. Just turned off right now, I forgot it was even on. Just turned off. 4.52, so you get almost exactly two hours out of a full charged V-mount battery. Good to know. It's making me wanna buy some V-mount batteries. It's just really cool to not have it plugged in. It feels like super, I just like things that uh, you can take anywhere. And I don't own any of these. I'm gonna look at how much they cost right now. BH Photo V-mount. Yeah, so you get two of them for 5.50. That's a great deal right there. 4.55, all right, I gotta come back into the office tonight and record that video. It is now 5.40, I'm going home, I'm gonna grab a quick bite to eat, I'm gonna put the kids to bed, and I'm gonna be back, I'll see you in a second. You stay there, you stay right there. Dinner was fantastic, sausage, potatoes, uh, kids were rambunctious as ever, they're now asleep. I need to get three shots. Gonna be heavy, it's gonna be heavy, second lens. Um...
say this is an appropriate use for the lift. So the idea is that I'll just be sitting here in front of the Capitol and it'll be dark, darker. I'll turn the ISO down. <laughs> then I'll turn the light on and you'll be able to see me, long lens. That's the, that's the concept for the shot. All right, so it looks like it'll have to be about ISO 200. It really could even be a little bright. Let's go 160. Three over here, two of them turned out. One of them didn't hit focus, unfortunately. What are you gonna do? Problem with the A7S III is you don't need a light. <laughs> look at this, like I like this look. I really like this look a lot, don't get me wrong. You need lights for production work, I get it. I understand lights are important. Lighting is the art of cinematography. I just like this camera a lot. <laughs> editing here and found this song that really reminds me of the running home scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It made me want to go and, re and record my own version of that in like a silly fun way for an Instagram story. Such a good scene. I can't, obviously can't do it. It's so freaking complex. I can't even, I should remake it at some point though. Maybe I'll just go out and get some shots of me running. It's not super, it's not freezing. It's like 46 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's also not, you know, hot. The trick is just dive in. Just pretend like you're not cold for a little bit and then like you'll get used to it. That's what I'm telling myself. I gotta go. It smells absolutely delicious out here because of that restaurant. Woo! Just one more shot I need, but Amber needs to help me out with it. <laughs> I gotta go. It's like really going right now. <clears throat> it's you're like less comfortable. Make <laughs> you count, last run. All right, we're editing this story now. How about that green line that always comes at the bottom? Like anytime you edit something, you want to upload it to Instagram, you always just gotta zoom it in just a little bit. I can't stand that. I'm just happy, just a feel good movie because the world can be really sad. <laughs> Posted it basically everywhere you can post a short video like that. It has different music on all of the platforms, stories, uh, reels, TikTok. Okay, I gotta go give these batteries back to Matt. Oh man, I've been sitting down for too long. 
Okay, both the batteries are in the car, I think. Let's go. All right. Two hours, 150 watts. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you gotta just meet people and be with people and hang with people. Matt was just telling me about a couple jobs he's gotten from a connection through a connection. And like, the more people you know, the longer you stay in the game, the longer you're the video person. You just gotta, you gotta network. You gotta try to get to meet people and work with people and make a good impression. Like, this industry is still that. I know it's, that's like an old way, but it's the, it's the current way, all right? Just gotta meet people and come on. This is really interesting to me. So this is the third video I think I've watched now on s -Sinitone. And I made a video on s -Sinitone versus Standard uh, because I normally shoot in Standard on this and I was excited to try out s -Sinitone and and whatever. Um, it's just interesting the different ways that people's minds think about stuff. Like Dunn has shown us like the gamma curve and the end, some technical stuff. And like I had, no, I have pretty much, I have a, I have a, you know, a beginner's understanding of it, but I have pretty much no idea about any of that stuff. And for me, my test was just like, I'm gonna shoot in at Cinetone, I'm gonna shoot in Standard, I'm gonna see which one I like better. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna make a video about that, and uh, yeah, you know, I think I definitely gain value from these kind of videos. Like, you know, Gerald Undone is obviously who comes to mind first when you're thinking about someone who's going to be able to break down like the specs and facts about a camera, or about a whatever, um, and then the whole way on the other side of the spectrum, you have people like me who we're just making videos and don't necessarily understand all of what goes into it. We just like try to figure out the tool enough to be able to use it and then see if we like the way that that made our thing work. And I just think, I don't know, I think that's interesting. Sorry, musings, Monday morning musings. Other thing, I'm also uh, trying to decide if I should just sell my 17 to 28 lens and my 70 to 180 and just get, I think it's the Tamron 28 to 70. Because like this is 17, I'm normally shooting in here more around like 24. And so, but if I got that 28 to 70, like this would be as wide as I could ever go for this office shot. I don't love the office shot. I, I've never loved the office. I never love just staying in one place and making a video, ever. I've never loved that. Sometimes you gotta do it, especially with, in the beginning of 2020, I was making like videos inside my house all the time. Now I have this massive white uh, backdrop back here which like I don't love it, but I do like that it's cl much cleaner than the disgusting yellow of this office and like seeing all the junk around in this like filing cabinet. I never loved the filing cabinet was like a part of my videos. It's like, get it, no. What are you, like a 1960s, you know? Like why do I have, a, I don't like this, I don't like the way any of this looks. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm currently at the, at just the white wall because I'm like, I don't like the way that that looks either, but it, it at least looks cleaner than, okay, so enough, enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> All that is to say, I don't know, you know, maybe I don't ever need anything wider than 28. Vlog style, you know, if I'm ever like walking around vlogging, this would be basically, I mean, I could go a little bit wider. I could go. Like that would be the widest shot. That would look a lot more similar actually to what I started on, which was the 35 millimeter equivalent, um, walking around vlogging. But I don't do that quite as much anymore. I'm often setting the camera down somewhere. It is nice, but it's just always nice to have the option. But it would also be really nice to have the reach of just spinning to 70, you know what I'm saying? You can hold it a good amount closer when you're in here, but it does make your face look a little bit weird. You know, this is like, I'll have to get a strong right arm again if I wanna 
do that. Ugh, I don't know. I just really like minimalistic kits. Like, the, you're probably saying like, well, why do you need to sell this or the other one? Just keep all three. Like, I don't really like having to carry around multiple lenses. What I really want is a 15 to 200 f2.8. Like, that's what, that would be my ideal lens. Obviously, it'd be very hard to make that lens um, happen, but that's what I really want. Like, even, even a, a 20, like a 20 to 70 would be cool. Maybe I'll do some research here. All right, so this is the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 DG DN, I don't know what those two stand for, art lens for Sony E. For a mere $1,100. Still in here at 28. So like this would this would give me four more millimeters. This would this would give me this. Like when it comes to liking the way your face looks, pretty much the widest I like to go is 20. So I'm I'm cutting myself out of four millimeters basically. Like I'm you know instead of being able to get this, I'd be right in here which I do actually like the way my face looks better at 24 than 20. It's just I'm, I'm like fine with 20. I'm fine with 17. You know, it's not that much different than 20. But uh, the, what I really want you to take away from this conversation is none of this matters. It's just really about what's gonna help you make videos fastest and in the most energizing way for you and your creative soul. This has been a con this has been a longer conversation than I was planning on having with you this morning. Now this will come down to personal preference. Personally, I prefer the Sigma's implementation because I get the benefits of the lock, but the speed of not having one when I need to zoom in a hurry. I'm watching the master. He's comparing pause, pause, Gerald. He's comparing the three lenses that I'm basically talking about: the 28 to 75 from Tamron, the 24 to 70 from Sigma, and the 24 to 70 from Sony. And I think he's making the case for the Sigma. I love this stuff, this is so fun. Amber got a new tablet, Remarkable 2 tablet, that she's, uh, she just got it today. I think she's at home still, Finley's at school, Avery's home. So I'm gonna go and get some shots of her using that tablet for a video leap video. Then I need to be at home because she's going to get a haircut. So that's how I'm sculpting my life into helping me create the videos that I need to create using just what's happening in my life. This didn't need to become a teachable moment. I just, I did that for some reason. I decided I'm getting it Sigma 24 to 70. I'm selling my Tamron 70 to 180. Hopefully this is wide enough for you because that's what's gonna happen when that lens comes. I've locked my keys in there before. It's not good. Lori? Is anybody in here? I'm excited to be strong in my right arm again. It got like really hot. It's 64 degrees out here. Quick stop at my old office because uh, I got this DM the other day and they were like, bro, did you get my letter? I was like, no, which address did you send it to? And they said this one. And I don't, I just haven't been here in a while to check the mail. So hopefully there's a letter in here for me. Just walked in here. Christian, Josiah, guess who they're watching on the screen? <laughs> not a great still. You might not have been able to see it, but it's Becky and Chris. Because it has it. so much leverage, because it's so long, it's still freaking heavy. And this one only has two. Oh man. The good thing is when you go on a trip, yeah. You can you can do like uh, you know you can do like workouts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your shoulder. <laughs> so you got oh. somebody, somebody didn't uh, put these in here, right? Well, they're supposed to be in here like this. Nope, that was Tom. <laughs> well, anyway, that goes in there. Uh huh. But then you got these little apartments. Here. I really like it a lot. A lot. Of extra space, but yeah. Yeah. See, see ya. Man. Great see to you. see ya. Good to see you Thanks for being rad. Love your new cases. Great stuff. Great work as always. Later.
So this tablet that she's working on, I'm pretty sure it's not like a normal screen. So I'm hoping that uh, these variable ND filters are gonna work. Like, and it's not gonna do, sometimes variable NDs, like because of the polarization, doesn't work well with, um, with screens, but the screen is different. So I'm hoping it's gonna work. This is a six to nine stop uh, Peter McKinnon Mist Edition. And um, yeah, excited to see how it works. I'm gonna be shooting on the A7S III, but I'm gonna be shooting on this uh, 70 to 180. Here again, like really I want like the 50 to 70 range. I just find myself so often shooting at 70 on this. So hype for that, uh, hype for that new lens. The sky turns gray against a fiery display of red and golden hues like the day I felt for you. So what will you do when the sun begins to fall? I'm waiting here for you, won't you answer my call? Don't you wanna get cozy with me? We'll dive into a reverie Oh, don't you wanna get cozy with me? getting a haircut. Kids are downstairs watching Mary Poppins. Beautiful day. Beautiful day out. Whoop, whoop. Soon we'll say hello to evening snow. So what will you do when the air gets cold? Won't you quicken your steps and hurry on home? Don't you want to get cozy with me? We'll die but it's a series of pluses. A long twisting plus fangs were as cool as any place that got. You can do anything. Truly, 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 truly. You can do anything that you want. All right, I just want you to know that. I'm watching this Vice documentary. My friend just sent me a New York Times article about the YouTube show All Gas No Breaks, which I had never heard of, regrettably, because it sounds like it's been an awesome ride. Um, the article explained by Taylor Lawrence explained what happened, a bunch of, like, they got mixed up, messed up, and a bunch of contractual stuff, and it sounds like the production company owned really everything, like the channel, the Patreon, the Instagram account, everything, because of a contract that the guy Andrew had signed years ago. Um, they ended, He ended up not wanting to make stuff about what the production company wanted to make stuff about, so they completely shut him out of all the accounts, and... And now I'm watching this Vice documentary about um, about it, all gas no brakes, and and incredibly inspired. And but it just you can really you can literally do anything you want to do. You can do anything you want to do. It's gonna take. It's likely gonna take a lot more time than you think. It's gonna take a lot more effort than you think. And you're probably gonna have to be like applying effort blindly as you're trying to do the thing. You know, like not really knowing if you're doing the right thing and, and, and afraid of wasting your effort towards the wrong stuff in pursuit of whatever this thing is that you want to do. But um, like you can, you can do it. You can do that. And, and you should do that. And ah, man, I just, I love stories like this. And now I'm obviously following along on all the socials and everything. But I just want to, I just, A, a one, if you ever have a question about a contract, pricing, um, you know, a project, if you just want someone to talk to, to, to just try to hold your hand through a little bit, a piece of it, like I'm not a genius by any means. I know a little bit about this stuff, about some of this contractual stuff and, and whatever. I know a tiny bit and I'm willing to always tell you when I don't know enough and, and we got and you gotta get a lawyer or whatever. But if you just want to talk about the beginnings of it, I'm always happy to talk. DMs are open on Twitter. Hit me up and, and like let's try to figure it out together. 
that's A. But B, you can do it. You can do it. You can navigate this stuff. You can do the stuff, make the stuff that you want to make. You can do it. I just, I'm like very fired up right now. I've only been to Nashville once, and it was when Allegiant, um, yeah. they're like their first flight down to Nashville right. from Harrisburg. And they reached out and they're like, uh, hey, would you want to go on this first flight from Harrisburg? We saw you in Harrisburg. Just put, just do, I think it was like two Instagram posts and then I had to give, I had to give like five photos to Allegiant for theirs. I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Got a bunch on the docket today. Just had a cool meeting with uh, clients slash potential clients slash, you know, just one of those meetings where it's like, you never know what this stuff is going to turn into. You never know but also just an old friend. Uh, we used to go to this networking group together and it just made me think about just how important it is to stay in the game. Anything you're doing that's entrepreneurial, that's kind of owned by you, no one's paying you a salary to do it, if you just stay in that game in some way, stuff, stuff happens, stuff comes about. Since I'm not on the micro four thirds uh, system anymore other than just sometimes and whatever. I sold this Sure 50 millimeter anamorphic on eBay. I gotta go ship that. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a hassle because the first person who won it in the auction didn't have the money to buy it. <laughs> Which takes like, it takes like four days to resolve that. Um, but thanks, thankfully, as soon as I relisted it, somebody just bought it now. So I'm gonna go and ship that. That's the first thing. Got to edit maybe two videos. And then at five, I'm going to do a, um, a video with a guy named Jelani, who is like a street photographer here in Harrisburg. And I'm pretty hyped on it. And I think I'll put it on Instagram because that's the, uh, I mean, I might, I'll probably put it on YouTube too. But um, if I do like an IGTV, Jelani is mostly active, I believe, on Instagram. Um, it's always easiest to push people like over to another account if you're on the same platform. Quick, quick tip for any of you who do collabs with the hopes of pushing people who watch you over to that person, especially on YouTube. If you, if you post a channel on YouTube, A, do that like at the channel if their channel's big enough so that they can just click that little like, you know, it turns that into a link and you can just click that channel. But B, then second best is posting the actual channel link like youtube.com slash channel link, even if it's the crazy one. Because if you do a short link like bit.ly or genius links or anything like that, any sort of short link, it will take them out of the YouTube app. And then it's gonna be a lot harder, potentially, for someone to subscribe to that new channel and even just navigate it. Like, if you post the YouTube link, it's gonna, it's gonna keep them within the YouTube app and take them to that channel. And that's, that's big stuff, you know? Those, those are, when are talking thousands of people, potentially, over the course of that video being seen. Um, you know, you want as many people to flow over as possible. Just something that I that I've noticed numerous times. Okay, I'm gonna send this lens first. Van Nyzat does really cool, makes really cool, very different, very cool videos. really up to you to just get your ideas done, okay? Like nobody, nobody really knows for sure whether an idea is good or bad before they actually put it out into the world. Like, yeah, some people, you know, from their past or however many times they've tried before or however much studying they've done or whatever, some people know uh, maybe better than others, but nobody really knows for sure if like what you're gonna do is gonna succeed or fail or be the failure that unlocks the thing in you that brings you to the success that you're hoping for. So it's really just, it's up to you, all right? It's up to you and you just gotta get out there and do it. So I just looked at the calendar, at the date thing, uh, cause I was downloading some footage and I realized that it's the 24th 
and that my four video leap videos are all due tomorrow. And honestly, this is this is just the hardest part of any of every career that I've ever been in is that for whatever reason mostly like ADHD and executive function and stuff like that I don't start working on projects until the very last possible second that you can start working on them and like it'll be fine like I've done this an uncountable number of times the clients are always happy like the videos get done it all works out I know that it'll be fine and like that's probably part of the reason that it that it keeps happening but even if it wasn't fine there's definitely been times where it wasn't fine um, it was like part of the reason that I resigned from my first job because like it started becoming not fine too many weeks in a row when I was having these conversations with my manager and like hey you didn't go on 20 discovery visits like you were supposed to and I was like yeah I couldn't slam all 20 into the last day before this meeting um, even if it wasn't fine like it still might not fix this about my brain and I think that is just a hard thing about my life and how my brain works and this constant kind of battle of like why don't you just do the stuff that you know you should do or want to do so that you don't put yourself in this position again yet again you know next month and uh yeah that's been my life for my entire adulthood and here we are again here we are yet again got 50 minutes until I go on the shoot with Jelani I think I'm gonna probably end up using this video that Jelani and I make um, as a Squarespace video and you know that will help but uh, time got away from me this week time got away from me this week and you know, my face feels all hot and like you know I have that like panic that deadline panic and uh, yeah it's kind of just a crazy kind of just a crazy experience and crazy I'm super hyped for this video with Jelani though. It's uh, it's got some no small creator vibes for for sure. He's a photographer based out of Harrisburg. Just makes really cool stuff, kind of like street photography, documentation type stuff. And he's very active. Like posts posts a lot of photos on Instagram, and just you can tell, just like really honing his craft. And I don't know really exactly what his story is or any of that stuff and I'm really excited to find out and ask him those questions. Quick update, I did just outline all the videos that I'm gonna have to make tomorrow and I feel a lot better now. Just a quick outline, you know, like just getting it all right there. Granted I had this, but like turning it into an actual outline instead of just like a bullet point was helpful. Uh, yeah. All right, let's go make this video. Just gotta drive over to State Street and then that's where I'm meeting Jelani. Then I'll follow him around, take some vids of him while he takes some pictures, ask him some questions. Simple as that. Sometimes you just like gotta get out of your head about it. It's not as it's not as complex as you as you wanna make it, man. Just make the video. Alright, cool. So uh, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, my name is Jelani Spawn and I'm a photographer from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So we've been walking around. We probably went over a bunch of this stuff already. Yeah. But I'm gonna re-ask it to you because I loved all, I loved everything you were saying. Yeah, go on. So how, yeah, tell me about how you got into photography. Uh, well, it all started when I was 
you know, growing up with my grandparents, my grandpa would always bring uh, his camera with him and we'd always take pictures. And somewhere in my head, I was like, I want to give that a shot. So, you know, I got a camera for Christmas one time when I was a teenager. And, you know, it just went from there. I got the camera. I went on vacation, took pictures. That was pretty cool. And then transitioning to college, I was part of this black student union club. And I had this idea in which I wanted to do a, a black photo shoot. And so we did. And I had the time of my life. And I realized this is what I wanted to do. And so after college, I had to figure out a career move and I finally figured out I wanted to be a photographer. So is this your full-time thing or do you, or do, you do um, is this a side hustle? How do, you, how do you see yourself? I would like to see it as a full-time thing, but right now money's tight. I mean, COVID happened and, and everything's just going crazy. So I'm working two jobs right now and I'm also balancing out this. One day I hope to transition it to like a full-time thing, but until then I'm just practice with my skills and just share it with people, you know? Yeah, man. What style of photography do you like best? How would you describe what you like best? That's a good question. Um, I just like, well, I think I have my own thing and I people don't really have to follow it or anything, but I think I like to call it like Zen photography, like just a chilled version of photography. My mentor always taught me uh, two things. Uh, photography is the study of light and just like the study of human beings. And so I really like the idea of the study of human beings part, especially with a camera, because when you think about it, like with a selfie or like even of a picture from like World War II, for example, or even just like a picture that you would just take because you're bored and you want to do a photo shoot with your friends, all of that is connected to the human being, to just like the life of a human being. And art has a pretty good way of introducing what life means to us, but in different perspectives. When you see Van Gogh, when you see, oh my goodness, when you see like musicians play, uh, even like when ballerinas or like professional dancers go, you're seeing human nature, but just in different forms. And it's really amazing. And photography for me, it really opens up to a certain philosophy that I have where I don't really have a set like favorite type of genre I just go out and just take pictures and but you know if I can really give an honest opinion I just like candid photography when people are in their like element that's when you see the best or sometimes the worst in them but you do see a side of them that cannot be staged or cannot be engineered it's just them in general yeah dude totally um, you mentioned art. Do you consider yourself an artist? At first I didn't. I really didn't consider myself as an artist. And that's just me. That's my personal opinion. I was very insecure. Uh, sometimes I do have issues of self-doubt, but it's human. Um, I try to just like keep it real and just say I'm a photographer. I try not to put any labels on it. I just do my own thing and then hopefully people take a look at it and they say, hey, that's pretty good. You know, and just go from there. But to answer your question, yeah, I do see myself as an artist, but I don't really focus on a title. I kind of just go to work. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's the definition of an artist, man. Yeah, man. Oh, that's that's great. <laughs> do you do you consider yourself a political photographer? Yes and no. For me, I'm just there. I just exist to take pictures. I get in and I get out. And sometimes I will share my opinions. Um, but while I'm behind the camera, you know, only thing that matters is I get that shot. And once I share it online, it's up to people to decide what they want to believe in and what they want to do. Just give me one moment real quick. Yeah. I'm very invested in politics. I, I want to know what's going on. Sometimes I don't like politics, so I just turn that off and just like relax. But you can't really escape it. You just, either you're invested in it or you're not. So I'm in a mix for both. Uh, I firmly believe in Black Lives Matter. You know, I mean like, hey, it's me. I'm a black photographer, anything can happen. I don't think it sometimes because I think, you know, I have a camera and I'm invincible. In reality, I'm not. I remember going to a, a Trump rally down here at the Capitol and I'm kneeling when they're doing national anthem. 
And when I get up, this dude, he has an AK-47 or a semi-autograph rifle uh, strapped to his chest. And he just goes, well, if you don't like it, you can just go somewhere else. And for a moment, I didn't even think about it. Uh, I quickly just responded, no, that's okay. I'm going to stay right here. You can go, though. But I didn't have anything on me. All I had was a camera. I mean, like you could have pro probably punched my lights out. And so, you know, it's hard to answer that, but I would just have to go with yes and no at the same time. Photographers have this very special gift that they were given. They were given the chance to see the world through the eyes of the lens. And there's a certain way of doing things. And with that power also comes responsibility. You have the power to take pictures of a Trump rally, yeah, but you have a responsibility to yourself to represent yourself as, a, as mature as possible. You also have to be safe. There can be no recklessness whatsoever. And that's how some of the big, you know, photojournalists make it out. They don't think, oh, let me get the shot and get out. They also have to think about the ramifications, the repercussions, how much this is gonna cost, what should I do, how should I act? So when I go out and take pictures, I always keep that in mind because you never want to be a photographer who's just there for the moment and get out. You want to be there for the moment and live the moment as a human being should with like respect and civility and some degree of kindness, if not a huge degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about photography and photo walks as therapy. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I recommend it to some people. They might not follow the steps because everyone is different and that's cool. But, you know, just with my life in general, it's been interesting, you know? I've, I've been to a bunch of Black Lives Matter rallies. I've been pretty much just doing anything and everything I can to work hard. Sometimes that gets stressful. Sometimes you just want to think about your life and where it's going. And sometimes you go to a very dark place. And I've been to that place way too many times in my life. But it happens, you know, it's the human in you. Um, I would say that like, uh, I'm depressed. I do have depression and sometimes it sucks a lot. One of the best ways of coping with that is just going out and just taking pictures. Um, when the world's hustling and bustling and you just don't know what to do, you feel like you don't have a place in the world. Um, for me, I just grab my camera whenever I have those thoughts and I just go out and just take pictures. Whether it's rain, sleet, or snow, I firmly believe there's beauty in almost everything you take a look at. You know, it can be a bird in the sky or it can be like some graffiti painting. No matter what, you're always going to find something enchanting. And it's therapeutic for me because I, with this camera, I find some faith in like myself and also just humanity and the human nature. Something that has not been in people in a while. I think a lot of people have lost hope of what life is just all about. You know, when you hear about politics and you hear about controversies and cancel culture and everything, you kind of just lose yourself and you become more cynical, which happens. Like I said, that's life. You're never going to be perfect. But for me in that moment when I'm taking pictures, none of that really matters. I, I think it's just... I'm seeing human expression, and that just makes me happy as it is. Yeah. Uh, last question is, um, you know, I noticed you shoot a lot of details, like you said, like graffiti or like little stickers, or that's some of the stuff that I love for, you know, watching your Instagram. Tell me about that. Like, what, why, why do you notice that? How do you notice that little stuff? Why do you notice it, and, and what's important about it? One of the main rules when it comes for me being a photographer is paying attention to detail. I, I've worked at photography studios before, so of course, like I'm gonna have to take a pay, pay attention to detail, and I have to say, hey, this guy's missing something, or um, you might want to check on that person. That person kind of smiled a little bit weird, and so I've just developed that habit of just going outside. Every time I go outside, I take a look around and I see what's going on. Sometimes I'll just see graffiti, and other times I'll just see stickers. I mean, with beautiful quotes and sayings every picture that you take is somewhat important because it contributes something to humanity in general. It, like I said, it can be just like some tattoo from a dude's back, but like you can be like, 
that's awesome. That's just part of the human experience. We're just rocking as we're rolling, you know? So when I take a look at the stickers and graffiti and everything, I find it more important every day to take, pay attention to detail because people will just go, how come I didn't see that? Like, where is this? Like, where can I find it? And they have their own adventure. Awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Okay, head down today. Just trying to get these four videos done. I need to shoot pickups for two of the videos and then do the actual tutorial record and then edit them and send them out. So that's the goal for today. It's going to be hard for me to shoot any of the behind the scenes stuff because uh, this is all vertical and I need like some behind the scenes stuff vertical for these videos. So like basically both my cameras have to be vertical. But I just texted Logan Tremellen. He might be able to come up and shoot some behind the scenes. Though I can't come up until one, so I might be done shooting all that stuff, so that might not happen. These are some of my thoughts, okay? Let's say, let's go. Heads down, head down, head down, heads down. Real quick, look at this snail. It turns out snails are aliens. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion around cages, you know? Um, I generally like to keep the cage off just because it makes it, makes the camera so much more, uh, you know, smaller, better, easier. But when it comes to shooting vertical, the ability to just put a base plate right on the side, you know, that's really, um, that's really helpful because then your camera's not so off balance on a mini tripod like that. In other news, just realize that I have one fully charged Sony battery. I have three batteries in total. I have one fully charged one. This one is at 10%, this one is at 8%. Um, so that's a bummer, you know? I need both cameras today. Might be shooting some of this BTS stuff on my phone, I guess. Win some, you lose some. I was starting out, uh, I was doing wedding videos, as so many of us were. And, you know, I'll never forget, like, day before a wedding, you have your, all your batteries, they're all plugged in, charged, and you have multiple chargers, like seven batteries. You always wanted like three times more than what you needed. Um, and I don't do that anymore. When I was daily vlogging, I really used two batteries. Uh, basically, I kept one in my pocket, one in the camera, and I was only using one camera. I would keep one charged if I needed it. A lot of times I wouldn't need it that day, but always having that extra one in the pocket, you know, made you feel made you feel safe, made you feel good. But this whole two camera thing, behind the scenes, making videos of making videos, it uh, you know, it got me. It got me a little caught me caught me off guard this week. So apologies for that. Boom. Perfectly centered, not all off balance. Cages for the win. Logan, Logan came. There he is. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna go outside and get some one wheel stuff. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you like la 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 la. I am Andy. Thanks so much for coming up, man. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited for this project we do next week. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. All right. See ya. Don't tell them what it is, it's a I secret. Won't. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm trying really hard not to lose steam here, but I'm gonna have to go get like a Snickers or a Milky Way or something. Um, Cause I'm like losing, I'm losing steam. Uh, it's 135, which gives me approximately four hours to finish these edits. And I love challenges like this, so don't write me off. Don't write me off yet, all right? We're gonna get this thing. With the salted caramel Milky Way. All right, back at it. It is 5.32. 
uh, I, did, I didn't get them all edited. So the, the thing with these tutorials is there's really two edits involved. There's a shoot and then there's the edit in Video Leap which you're recording yourself editing. And then there's the edit of that tutorial, uh, if that makes sense. It probably does you're, because you're probably all on the same page. Didn't get done with that second edit, so have to do that. Have to do them in in the morning. So I'm gonna have to do them in the morning, which means I'm gonna have to write video leap and tell them, you know, I'm sorry that they're not done on time, which is part of my life. It's part of what I I have to do when I do stuff like this and don't get things done on time. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I hate I hate not meeting deadlines. I hate it. Um, see you in the morning. Done. Done. Got it. Done. Day late. Done. That's, that's that. I just gotta do these Squarespace videos.